What's going on, you guys? How's it going this afternoon? Evening? It's Dave here. David. It's about 5 10 in the evening. <clears throat> Pardon me. This will be the fourth time I've tried to do this video. I was running out of space and I kept trying to do it again, and I don't know. This should work, though. So, let's get right to it. This is kind of for me. I understand it's not the same for you. But this was heavy for me at the time. Um, when they... I was diagnosed. I have no idea what day. Or even what year. <laughs> I know it was approximately a year or two ago. <laughs> but anyhow. There was some really heavy stuff going on with my baby sister. And when I say my baby sister, I mean my 21-year-old sister. And they had just told me I had four months to live. So I was kind of like very, very emotional at the time. Trying to figure out, okay, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? About 120 days, what am I going to do with them? Kind of thing. Do I want to rob a bank? Well, no, I don't want to steal money. But anyway. This young man. Pushed my sister out of a car. While I was driving. And I decided. That. I've got four months to live. I'm going to go tell things kind of get a little bad. And I'm just going to go handle it. I want to spend as much time as I can with my kids. Hang out with them as much as possible. And just go get rid of them. Because, you know, I don't want them to hurt anybody else. And I know my sister. She's a brat. Just like you are and just like I am. We all have our moments, but at the same time, there's other people in this world. So, things progress, and next MRI, they tell me I'm getting, it's getting better, and, you know, I, I lose 100 pounds. Granted, I'm, I threw up 99.7 of those pounds. <laughs> By the way, chemo is disgusting. <laughs> Not that I'm saying don't do it. I'm just saying it, it really affected me. It really made me sick. Keto made me feel great. Chemo made me feel like butt. A very used butt. And I don't mean like penetrated. penetrated. I just mean like. You've, you've used it up. You've gone to the bathroom. But anyhow, sorry. So as, this, as my life was, in my eyes, coming to an end, and, you know, we're all, we're all headed that way, but my life had very little time left in it, and I was deciding whether or not I wanted to spend, how much of that time I was willing to spend in prison. Those were my thoughts. And as I started getting better, my value for life became more and more, for my life became more and more. And then the people around me, my value for the people around me's life became more and more. So Joe blows stranger down the road He probably values his life a lot. And I'm not talking fight or flight responses. I'm talking he probably loves his life. He probably has a, you know, maybe he has a kid. Maybe he has a car that he loves. I don't know. You know, I don't, I'm not 
talking about a particular person. I'm just thinking, you know, there's something that he loves and he values and it's his life and he's he loves it very much. And there's probably more than one or five or ten people who love him very much. So as I'm going through this, I was deciding whether or not how much time I'm willing to sacrifice for my kids. Hold on. To not, how much time I'm willing to sacrifice to make sure that this guy couldn't do it to somebody else. And, you know, this was all internal. I didn't, I wasn't, you know, vocal about it, but so I would think and I would think and I would think. And eventually, my outcome was is there's somebody who loves him. There's somebody who loves him as much as there's somebody who loves me. I can't take a man's life. I don't even want to kick a man's butt. I'm sorry. I just was, I've been thinking about that and I just wanted to vent it. It wasn't something I was prepared to talk about for the last couple of days. I've been thinking about it for the last couple of days. I wasn't really prepared to talk about it, but I just had to get it off my chest. So, to the iPad it goes. But anyhow. My ultimate, you know, decision was, I can't. I can't take a man's life. I can't hurt a man. When, when I'm fighting to keep mine, I can't take somebody else's. That's not okay. It's not, I don't want to say it's not fair, because that sounds like, mm, poor me, it's not fair. No, it's just not, it's not okay. You can't, when I'm fighting to keep mine, you can't plan to take somebody else's. And it's not like I'm fighting or flighting thing, like I said. It's not like, um, I don't know how to explain it. Like I'm, I'm fighting a man that once he gets hit really hard, he's going to go away. I'm fighting a disease that's that I was told was going to kill me. So at this point, not now, but at that point when I made that decision, there's no way I can take that man's life. So, anyways. I've been thinking about this for a couple days. I just had to get it off my chest. Sorry about the... <laughs> My big sister, when I was heavy dosing on steroids, uh, some of you guys might have done them before, it gets really intense as far as like um, your emotions go. And I was like crying probably 30% of the time. And every time she saw me crying, she goes, oh, put on your bitch tits. <laughs> Funny sister. But anyhow, thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for listening to me rant and rave. Um, yeah, I had to get that off my chest. It's, it's been several days in the making. I've been thinking about it a lot. Of how close I was to thinking, I mean, not, I wasn't like, you know, standing in his front yard or something, but how close I was to making that decision to say, okay, I have to do this. But I don't, I can't, I can't take a man's life. There's no way. Anyways, thank you guys for listening. Like, comment, and subscribe. And, you know, if you if you think somebody else would like what I hear, like what I have to say. I was going to say, like to hear what I have to say. Um, share it. And that's it. Thank you guys so much. I love you guys so much for listening. Have an amazing night.